Hi again. So now we've got our Reddit data in the previous lecture, we're going to run some sentiment analysis on these posts and comments. And we're going to discuss how to use what's called polarity and subjectivity scores to get a measure of the sentiment of these submissions and comments. And then we'll also do a little more plotting. We'll create some figures that have multiple subplots as we visualize our Reddit data. So in its simplest form, sentiment analysis applies a corpus of words and phrases that indicate sentiment. And one commonly used one is called SentiWordNet. You can look at their list online here. And so there's different words that have a positive score and a negative score. So unable, for example, has a negative score and a zero positive score. So worst and terrible and apprehensive are going to be negatively coded. Well, a phrase like feel like a million dollars is going to be positive. Some words have both positive and negative scores if they have multiple meanings or implications. And some more complex algorithms actually look at the part of speech that a word occurs in. For example, is it a modifier? Is it a verb? Um, where does it occur in terms of the, the grammar of that phrase? We're going to use Reddit um, that we scraped last time. But sentiment analysis is useful for many other sources of data as long as it's opinionated. So this is going to work really well on something like Twitter or in reviews. It's going to work much less well on something that's a little more dry and bland, um, perhaps like an academic article um, or a scientific, um, any, any sort of scientific document. So let's start, as always, like follow through this in your own notebook and experiment with the code as you go along. So we're going to use our pickle library to open these files that we saved at the end of last class using the pickle load function. And so we see the first um, post from LA Metro is that there's um, construction vehicles going down the subway tracks. So how do we do a sentiment analysis of this, this phrase or anything else? Well, TextBlob is a nice library that uses the body of text from the NLTK library to do this sentiment analysis. So we need to download these corpuses. This only, you only have to do this, um, the, 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 this once. Um, it's told me I already did it, and it's up to date. Let's import our TextBlob library. And now look at the documentation. We'll see that the sentiment property returns a tuple a name tuple that has both a polarity score and a subjectivity score. The polarity score is going to be in the minus 1 to plus 1 range. Subjectivity is a 0 to, to 1 range. So polarity score, it goes from minus 1, which is very negative, to plus 1, which is very positive. Subjectivity goes from 0, objective, to 1, very subjective. So something like, I lo love riding public transit, is going to be pretty positive. Right, it's um, 0.25 polarity, and it is somewhat subjective, um, 0.33. Whereas if my bus was late again, it's even more subjective, um, but it is coded as a negative sentiment. And we can access these directly, not to the, the sentiment gives us this, the, the, this tuple here, but we can access the polarity um, directly from a sentiment object. So let's come back to our Reddit comments. So let's go through and compute the sentiment or the polarity score for each comment. And we'll use a list comprehension here. Um, so this is going to be the same as creating an empty list, looping over every comment in a list of comments from the LA Metro subreddit, and then appending these to this list, the text blob, this comment, and extracting the polarity score. So rather than do this, we're just going to do the list comprehension. And we loop over every comment in LA Metro, and we create a text blob object and extract the polarity score. So we get three lists of sentiments. We can look at the first few. So this first one is negative. This one is neutral. OK, so this is a great illustration of a sentiment analysis is not that perfect. It particularly it doesn't understand sarcasm. Plus 0.1 completion um, gets a sentiment of 0, even though I assume the poster meant this to be negative. Sentiment um, positive, and this is probably very justifiably 
put as a negative comment that this is so insane. So let's visualize this. So rather than looking at each sentiment score, let's see if we can plot the three agencies together. So a histogram seems appropriate here. And the Seaborn hist plot function is nice. It takes some, some, some data and there's many other parameters to adjust the, um, um, the, 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 the visualization that you can experiment with, with. And this data can take a list or any other sequence as well as a pandas data frame. So if I pass this list here, LA sentiment, then we see that there's a positive skew. Actually, most of the comments are neutral. They're around about um, zero. There's some really negative ones down here, but on balance, they are positive. Well, what does this mean? Well, it's perhaps more useful if we have some reference point to compare it to. Is LA Metro seen more positively or negatively in these Reddit posts compared to other agencies? Well, we've already used the plot subplots function to create a set of axes. But its real power comes when we create multiple figures, or rather one figure with multiple plots. So rather than just using no arguments, we can create a one by three matrix, which returns a list here in terms of axes, and creates three empty, um, empty plots. Now, axes is a list. So we can access this axis here as axis 0, this axis as axis 1, and so on. And we can loop over this axis that matplotlib returned, just as we can with any other list. So again, why do we do this? Well, this is really useful if we have like lots of different transit agencies, or perhaps lots of different climate plans, and we want to plot something for each of these. Here we're going to use a loop to clean up each plot. And we're going to use the zip notation, which is really nice because it loops over two lists and pairs these up. So for example, if you have a list of comments and a, and a matplotlib um, list of axes, it matches the first element of each, each list to, to, together. So let's see what this, um, this does. So let's create a blank axes object. Let's plot our three sentiment scores. And then we'll give them names, LA Metro, BART, NYC, RAIL. And this is the zip notation. So it's going to take the three axes and the three subreddit names, which is this list here. And it's going to, for each combination, it's going to put the first axis in this object, this um, first name in this object. So then we can set the title, we can set the limits, and do other cleanup. And then fig tight layout is a nice function that kind of cleans up the spacing and, um, and so on. So here we have a plot which is we can do more comparison. Interestingly, in New York City, it's more evenly balanced, more negative as well as positive, whereas our BART um, scores, OK, in all of these, there's a lot of neutral sentiments, um, but there's a lot of very positive ones for BART as well. So there's a lot we can do here. We could rely on different subreddits, which might attract different types of users. Maybe we should look at the Bay Area and Los Angeles as a whole and then filter for posts about transit, rather than um, just looking at these more dedicated transit subreddits. We could tokenize each comment into sentences and then get the sentiment of each. Otherwise, if someone has a really long comment, the more opinionated part of it might be lost um, or diluted by the more neutral parts of that comment. So maybe we could rate each sentiment of each sentence separately. We could use a different sentiment analyzer. TextBlob has some pre-trained options you can explore here. NLTK is much more powerful, but you have to train your own sentiment analyzer, but much more sophisticated than the simple approach of TextBlob. And the final thing I'd say is that sentiment analyzers are often trained on movie reviews and other things which are really opinionated. And so if you have a more specialist application, for example, in some of my own work on looking at how different disciplines frame urbanization's environmental impacts, we found that writing was too technical or dry in style, and so we had to code our own sentiment analyzer. But I'm going to leave these for you to explore on your own or in the years to come. And the final takeaway from this module is that sentiment analysis can identify what's positive and what's negative in terms of writings about a topic. 
And these pre-trained models, like we used in TextBlob, are a really good starting point. But you can also go further and train your own if you find that they're not well adapted for your own use case.